how, how are you being guided to Islam? Um, obviously, first thing we say is Allah's mercy. Yeah. But me, I was brought up uh, outside London. Yeah. So when I was about 17, 16, 17, I became interested in life. Like, what are we here for? What is right? What is wrong? How should we live our life? So being an English man, yeah. the first thing I started reading the, the Bible, which I liked. Yeah. You know, the stories of Jesus, about God. I didn't understand so much, but I liked it. I used to read the Old Testament. So I looked at Christianity, and there were things which I liked. But this is this is my uh, my opinion, whether whether people agree or not. I found that it didn't really offer so much structure on how to live your life. Like be a good person, go to church. But I wanted more structure, so I looked at the Old Testament, and you know where it has more laws, like you should do this, you should eat this. This is how you should have a. Uh, uh, marital relationships it has more laws yeah so I, I looked I looked at this can, can I continue with the answer yeah, 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 no, yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah, no problem yeah. so I looked at the the Old Testament which I liked and I continued reading the Bible but I wasn't actually convinced by any uh, by Christianity or Judaism so I started looking at uh, Hinduism Buddhism etc then this is this is my this is my thoughts. It's I'm whether a person agrees or not. This is my this is this is my thought process. I felt that religions were made up by people, but there has to be a God. There has to be a life after, and you have to try and live a good life. So I tried to follow what I felt comfortable with. Like I felt you shouldn't eat pork. Uh, I stopped drinking alcohol. Uh, I felt that you should have relationships inside marriage. And I just felt like I just tried to follow this, but not uh, identify with any particular religion. Then I was in my, my friend's house and there was a, a brother from, uh, who, he, he's West Indian brother. He had embraced Islam a year before. Uh, his brother's name Nasruddin. He used to be called Foxy. So everyone's, everyone said in the house, Foxy's coming. He came in the room and he spoke about Islam for five or ten minutes. For me, it was so clear, so straightforward. His message was the message of Islam, but this is what this is what the brother said from what I remember. Obviously, it was a long time ago. God is one. Worship him alone. How do you know uh, one day we're going to go back to God? You're going to be judged. Paradise or hellfire. How do you know what God wants? He sent messengers and books. When I heard it, for me, it's like um, it wasn't new. It was the, the example I give is you know your coat. Imagine you're you're in someone's house, and they say, "Brother, remember you you left your coat," and you say, "Yeah, yeah, yeah," and you go back and get it. That's why how I felt, even though it's the first time I heard about Islam. When the brother spoke to me, it was like, "Oh, I know this. This is." My heart agreed with it. So then, alhamdulillah, a few days later, you know, the youngster, they don't know, you know, yellow pages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, before, before internet, we had yellow pages. I looked up in the yellow pages. I looked up the, the mosque. I went to the mosque. I knocked on the door. I want to know about Islam. A brother, he was from Bangladesh. Um, I only reward the brothers who took care of me. When I said to him, I want to know about Islam, for me, as a young English person, what he said, it just, it just shocked me. He said, I can't tell you about Islam. First, you have to come to my house. Yeah. So for me, someone I've never met before, he took me to his house. And you know, the normal Muslim way, he put the cloth on the floor. Yeah, yeah. He brought a bowl and he said, when we, he said, when we, when we eat, we eat as, you know, like humble servants. We sit on the floor. He brought the bowl to wash our hands. The bro was Bengali, so he brought his what he considered to be his food and he made separate food for me in case you know my tongue couldn't take the the chili yeah 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 so yeah, I, 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 I i couldn't believe like how kind and how generous these brothers were so three or four days later alhamdulillah i embraced islam generally you know there's a a verse in, in surah baqarah it just comes i believe 256 it comes just after uh, ayatul kursi where allah says 
He mentions that there's no compulsion in religion. So in, in Islam, or any religion, we can't force someone to believe. We can't force someone to disbelieve. But then Allah continues by saying, but the truth is clear from error. So, well, when, so when something is true, the person's heart should recognize it. Yeah. But I would advise the people to, you know, be sincere. Yeah. Ask the creator to guide them, to open their heart to the truth. And yeah, read Quran and go to like trustworthy practicing people and ask questions. But yeah, don't, don't be shy to ask because yeah. if I can't answer, I can find someone else who can answer. But, but I'm, I'm going to say this as a Muslim, Islam has all the answers. As, as long as a person's asking sincerely and they want the truth, Islam has the answer. Yeah. Thank you so much. No Sorry problem. to take your time. No problem. My yeah. pleasure. Now I just want you to recite something to us. Hold the mic. Anything, anything from Quran, and that should be the last question. I'm sorry. I keep asking you more and more, but it's just. Um, Alhamdulillah. Any verses? Alhamdulillah. Maybe just, any class, Maybe any. Uh, any any verses? Just very simple, because from what I've understood, the companions sometimes when they were gather. Yeah. And some of them, when they would leave each other, yeah. they would recite this sort of very short sort of, but the meaning is very powerful. Okay, that's first time I know that. Uh, a brief translation you know, Allah, the Most High, He swears by time, the last. And Allah is the owner of everything, the creator of everything. So he has the right to swear by whatever he wishes. Whereas the creation, we cannot swear by anything other than Allah. We can't swear on our parents, we can't swear, we're only upon Allah. But Allah, he swears by time because he owns everything, he creates everything. And then he says, all of mankind is in loss. Person is rich, person is poor, person is educated, person is uh, ignorant. Person is black, person is white, male, female. Allah states all mankind is in loss. And then Allah makes an exception. And it's, he mentions four things except for those who believe. So they have the correct belief in Allah, His Messenger, وسلم, the last day. A person should learn the correct beliefs. The person does righteous deeds. They should do righteous deeds with sincerity according to the Sunnah of the Prophet. That's the second characteristic. Third, we encourage each other and we help each other upon the truth. And we encourage each other and we help each other on patience. The last thing the scholars they mention when Allah the Most High mentions something in Quran in the order, it has a reason. So Allah mentioned four things to save ourselves from being lost. Iman, the correct Iman, righteous deeds, encouraging, encouraging each other towards the truth, so as enjoying the good and forbidding the evil, and being patient. Why did Allah mention patience last? The scholars say because whenever a person believes, does righteous deeds, and he enjoins the good and forbids the evil, he is going to be harmed by the people, by their tongue and by their hands. So we have to be patient. Thank you so much. Allah reward you for that message.